Lucas, how are you? Thank you for joining us for our Veterans Day program. If everyone could please be seated, we're going to get started. Thank you. Welcome to today's ceremony and thank you for attending. We're here today to honor our service members and to remember the sacrifices that they made and the courage it takes to defend honor, duty, and our great country. Today we honor our heroes and remember your achievements, your courage, and your dedication and say thank you for your service. Would all veterans in attendance today please stand as you are able. Thank you. Your dedication to our country is what allows us to be here and enjoy the freedoms of our nation. In light of all that we see happening in the world today in conflicts across the world, we greatly remember the many ways that our servicemen and women continue to keep our nation safe wherever they may be. Please stand for the presentation of colors by the Burnham High School's JROTC. Please remain standing as long as the flags are on stage. Please remain standing for the moment for the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, and God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. And now the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one nation. And now for a moment of silence. Please remain standing and welcome our BHS choir as they sing the national anthem. Please be seated. Please welcome our Brenham High School Band as they play the Armed Forces Medley. 
Veterans, please stand as your branch is being played. Will the uh, members of the United States Army now stand?
Today we honor and say thank you to the veterans who have served and are serving our country. These brave men and women make countless personal sacrifices to serve our national interests all around the world. Their service to our nation allows us to enjoy our lives and pursue our passions. Please turn your attention to the screen as we view this special Veterans Day video. We observe today we observe a celebration, today, of freedom. celebration of freedom. The day America sets today aside America to honor millions of our finest heroes. They are the men and women who defend our country and preserve our peace and freedom. Each time our nation is called upon our citizens to serve, the best have come forward. Where do we get such brave young Americans? We can and should take the opportunity on this Veterans Day to remember their gift to us. Veterans know better than anyone else the price of freedom, where they've suffered the scars of war. All those who served in America's uniform deserve the nation's thanks. Words could never express what the patriotism of generation after generation of American heroes means for the very soul of our nation. Because of you, America's best days are still to come. And with faith, freedom, and courage, there's no limit to what America can and will accomplish. The graves of young Americans who answered the call to service surround the globe. They call to bear the burden, a struggle against the common enemies of man. United, there is little we cannot do. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Throughout our history, America's men in uniform have always been ready when the cause of freedom called and they've never let us down. Our most recent heroes, those still serving, carried on with the same dedication and valor as their colleagues before them. If we remember that their dedicated service is in defense of our freedom, and if we understand that they put their lives on the line so we might enjoy justice and liberty, then their sacrifices will not be in vain. This is our obligation, and this has been the spirit of Veterans Day from the beginning. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. country, country, country. Here at Brenham High School, we have many teachers who are veterans and they continue to serve their country and our community by educating others. One veteran who has left his own legacy of service and education in Brenham ISD is Mr. Ben Seeker. Mr. Seeker graduated Brenham High School in 1965. He then went to Sam Houston University where he earned his Bachelor of Science degree before moving on to receive his Master's of Education degree from Prairie View University. He received his commission in U.S. Army Infantry and Military Intelligence serving in Vietnam from 1971 to 1972. Mr. Seeker returned to the States and began his teaching career in Burton ISD before moving to Brenham ISD, where he was a teacher, a counselor, an assistant principal, and finally a principal for almost 20 years. We credit Mr. Seeker with beginning the first Veterans Day program in Brenham ISD while Mr. Seeker was a principal at Brenham Middle School, and these programs continue across BISD to this day. Currently, Mr. Seeker is the commander of the James F. Dillon F. BFW Post 7104 in Brenham. Last year, the post received the rating of an All-American Post. There were only 350 posts that received this honor out of over 6,000 BFW posts worldwide. Not only was he part of the dedication of the local Veterans Plaza and the F-11-111 jet that are in Brenham Parks, he is also the president of the Washington County Veterans Association. Mr. Seeker is a member of Brenham First Baptist Church serves on the Hody Tech Center Advisory Committee and was recently chosen as a BISD Distinguished Graduate. He and his family, he and his wife, Kate, live on land that has been in the Seeker name for over 110 years.
Good morning. Thanks to BHS for having, a pro having this program and Ms. Lange and the Student Council for uh, putting this on. Uh, not, a whole, not all schools do this, uh, but Brenham ISD does it on every campus. And I'm, I'm very pl I'm pleased as the commander of VFW Post 7104 that that is happening. Ms. Lang asked me to, to somehow tie in service other than military service and, as, and when I talk today. I'm not going to give a speech. I tell stories. So sit back, relax, and maybe you'll learn something, okay? Besides, you could be sitting in math class, right, or English or something, whatever, I don't know. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, he was on that video. Our 35th president and a World War II veteran said, today we need a nation of Minutemen, citizens who not only prepare to take up arms, but citizens who regard the preservation of freedom as a basic purpose of their daily life. Some people would call those people patriots. I kind of call it a grateful nation. And those of you that maybe didn't pay attention to early American history, a minute man, we didn't have a standing army at those when we were getting ready to break away from the Brits, from British. You had to be ready to go in a minute. They'd pick up their muzzle and they would go. We need people like that. One way of service is uh, showing and respecting our flag. You did that today as we uh, began our program. I salute the flag. That's a sign of respect. That flag deserves our respect. That's another way of doing service. Just, uh, you can give blood when you get old enough. You can do that. You can attend veterans' activities on your own. You can volunteer to help others. Register to vote when you become eligible. I understand you all are doing that now. I have been. But just don't vote. Become an, find out what it is. You don't be an informed voter. Just don't vote for somebody because they look good or you like their name. Fly a flag at your house. And you young men out there, when you turn 18, you register for the draft. Why only men? That's the law. That law became effect, uh, effective a long, long time ago. Now we have the volunteer, volunteer service, and you volunteer for the military. Uh, our problem is we're not getting enough volunteers. Right now, the, uh, our military is made up of six, 16 to 17 percent women, and the rest, rest are men. The United States Air Force, the Army, and uh, the Navy have, will not fill their quota this year for getting people into their ranks. That's not good. It's been happening. Something needs to happen to get men and women to the military. Sometimes they happen when it's not a good thing. World War II. My dad was a Marine in World War II. He had done a four-year hitch in the Marines in the early 1930s. He met my mom. At, when he got out, they got married, and they moved back down here to Brenham. She was a nurse. He was a police officer. Things were moving along pretty good. My older brother had been born. She told this story. She started out. It was a beautiful December Sunday afternoon. And then she said, I remember the exact date. December 7th, 1941. It was in the afternoon, and your, your dad came running in, came all excited. He, well, she didn't know what was going on. He handed her a small box of wrapped Christmas paper, said, here's your Christmas present. I don't know where I'm going to be come Christmas. The Japanese have bombed Pearl Harbor. We're at war. I'm going back in the Marines. He was 34 years old when he said that. 34. Didn't have to go. Married, police officer, had a child. He got back in. It took him a while. They told him he'd have to go to boot camp. He went to boot camp, Marines out there, 
He graduates from Marine boot camp when he's 35 years old the second time. My mom kept all his letters. I read those letters every now and then. He was old enough to be the father of many of those Marines that graduate from boot camp. Statistics will tell you in World War II, of all those men that, that did graduate, they were 20 years old, uh, were 20 years old and younger. It was almost 70 percent of the graduates. He got it. He got what he wanted, and he also got two Purple Hearts in World War II. Part of the reason I talk, talk, try to talk about patriotism and what about veterans, is my dad, the stories he told me, and how it influenced me. And that story from my mom influenced my brother and I both that we should serve. In World War II, we had 16 million people in, our, in the service, 16 million. I need to mention this. It's, there's only about 120,000 of them left alive. Our veterans, our World War II veterans are going very quickly. Another thing happened in 2001 where people were quick to join the military and, join, and get in. It was a 9-11 attack. They killed nearly 3,000 Americans, attack on the Twin Towers. My age group had a little bit of different reasoning for going in the way it was. It was said I, was, I graduated in 1965. In my graduating class, there were only 142 people. Brenham was a lot smaller. We were not integrated. There were two high schools. There were 67 young men pictures in our annual of that group, 37 of us went into the military. Over half of the young men went into the military, not because they wanted to. We didn't have an ROTC. It's because they either got, the draft got them or something else. 17 of us wound up going to war in Vietnam. The Vietnam War is different from any other ones we've ever fought. It was a long, long war. It divided this country. You hear about our country being divided now between the Republicans and Democrats. It is nothing to what how our country was divided back then. Riots in the street, people with burning flags, jumping on them. And it lasted and it lasted. I went in after I graduated college. I went to, our, it was mentioned, uh, Sam Houston at ROTC. I was commissioned a second lieutenant. I went in 1970. I saw a couple of good places. I got to see Fort Sill, Oklahoma. That's not really a great place. Fort Benning, Georgia. Hollabird, Maryland. And uh, the last, I was stationed at San Francisco at the Presidio. And then I got my next orders, Vietnam. I went to Vietnam, did my job, did what I was asked. Saw some things I didn't like to see, didn't want to see, did some things I did not want to do. But that's the military and that's the war. When we were getting ready to get, I was getting ready to come back home from Vietnam. We'd worked our way, a, a group of our men, to a large airport where a big old silver jet was going to land, and pick us up and take us back to America. Right before we got on the plane, a, an officer said, I need all the officers over here for just a minute. I need to talk to you. I was an officer, so I went over there. About 150 men, I guess, five, six, seven officers. He said, maybe you haven't heard, but I'm going to tell you. When you get back to the States and you land in Seattle, Washington, in all likelihood, there are going to be some protesters there, war protesters. And they're not going to be saying, thank you, welcome home. They're going to have signs and they're going to be yelling murderers, baby killers, things I can't even tell you here. They'll be throwing things at you. Sometimes they'll throw things at you, a paper bag. I don't want to tell you what was in that paper bag. Then he continued, he said, and then they'll try to spit on you. He said, you officers, your job is to keep your men straight, get them there, get through the terminal and get on the bus to go to Fort Lewis. And I'm thinking, how in the heck am I supposed to do my men when I'm gonna have enough trouble to do it? We got on the plane, long ride home. 
we landed in Fort Seattle early morning. Back in those days, if you've been to an airport, you know that nowadays the planes will pull up right to the terminal, you get off the plane into the terminal. Back then they landed and they were on a tarmac and they rolled out a big old roll of stairs, the stairs would hook onto the plane. We walked down those stairs, we were walking to the terminal and we came to a grassy area of some shrubs. Many, if not most of us on that plane got down on our hands and knees and we kissed the American soul. We knew we were probably going into a place and be met by an ungrateful nation. But we were grateful to be home, grateful to be alive. I thought I was gonna make it today. I always get a little upset. I don't care anymore. I wanna tell that story. But I don't tell a story about going through the terminal. We got through, we got on the bus. I got out of the army in a few, a few days. Well, days. I came on home to Brenham. I was a teacher. It was in the springtime. Uh, school districts weren't hiring. So uh, I got a job with a surveying crew. We wound up way on the other side of Conroe, back in the piney woods. And a widow woman met us there. And uh, we were surveying her land. Her husband had recently died. I guess we, I don't know if she was selling it or splitting it up amongst the kids. Uh, and we, we were doing our jobs. She followed us around. She never left us all morning long. She followed us. She followed us. And at, then at lunchtime, we sat down, found a good shade tree, and she sat down with us. And she was about from here to, to Miss Lang over there from me. And she kept looking at me, staring at me. And finally, I turned to her and said, Ma'am, is there something I can do for you? You keep looking at me. You keep staring at me. 50-something years ago, and I still remember it. She asked me, when did you get home? I said, excuse me? She said, when did you get home? When did you get back from Vietnam? I said, ma'am, I have not talked about Vietnam around here this morning. I swear I have never seen you. She got up, walked over toward me. She said, you got that look. She said, you got that same look my baby boy had when he came home from that god-awful place. And then, then as a mom can only do, she reached over and scratched me on the head and she said, he got over it. It took him a while, you'll get over it. And then she walked off. I never saw her again. Came back home, I said, man, what? how am I different? What am I, she, I went and talked to my mom. I said, mom, do I look any different? And she smiled, I said, yeah, maybe, maybe a little like your dad came home from World War II. So then I went and talked to my dad, and I said, Dad, do I look any different? Now, the vets here understand this a lot more than the students. My dad was a Marine, but he cussed like a sailor. So I got to clean this one up. He said, yeah, you look more like a man now. But I did find out I was different. I knew I was different, not just in the looks. The looks changed, but I was different up here. I was different in here. I figured out I had to do something. So I got with a VFW. People that have common interests and have seen things and do things. And I got there and I decided I'm gonna try to keep serving. I'm gonna keep getting up in front of groups and telling them about being a patriot, telling them what, how to treat veterans and while they, what's good and what's not good. And that's what I always wanna do. I'm gonna keep doing it. But also different because statistics, once again, will tell you that adult population of the United States of America, that's everybody over 18, only 6.2% are veterans, 6.2, six out of 100. And those that have been to a war zone are much less than that. We'll always be different. We'll always have things that we have inside that are up here. But we also care about that flag and we want to respect it. One last story. Oh, a couple years ago, uh, my wife and I were at a restaurant and I had on my VFW cap or something, I don't know. I was sitting down, there weren't many people in the restaurant 
and the couple was sitting not too far away, and the woman kept looking at me and looking at me. And my wife even noticed said, that woman keeps looking at you. You know her? I said, oh, no, nah, she, I'm just so good looking, she can't keep her eyes off of me, you know? And, and then a little while, the couple got up, and they walked over, and they stopped, she stopped at my table, and she said, you, you're a veteran. She said, yeah. I want to thank you for your service. I said, well, thank you, man, but something told me to lead that on. I said, why are you telling me that? She said, my husband and I just came back from my son. He just graduated boot camp. You know, he's going on to advanced training. So I looked at her and said, you're proud, aren't you? She said, yes, I am. I said, you're worried, aren't you? She said, yes, I'm worried. I said, ma'am, that's part of my mom's job. But let me tell you this, in all likelihood, he's gonna go and he's gonna do his job and he'll, back, he'll come back home, he'll, he'll be a better person for doing it, and he'll come home safely. But then when she walked off, I, I have to remember when I was say that. A young man here from Brenham came up to me a few years ago and said, Mr. Seeker, I'm, you know, I'm, the programs, the veterans programs and stuff, and you talking, that's one of the reasons I went in the Army. And I really didn't know what to say. He had been severely wounded in Afghanistan. There's good things and there's some bad things in the Army in the service. Now I won't leave you, I'm gonna get away from here, but I got two questions for you. I mentioned in my talk a group about, you know, patriots, people that love this country. I'm in the Brenham Honor Guard, and well, we've, we've awarded military honors at the request of the family of, of, of veterans. We've done over 500 here in Washington County. And I get the, the distinct honor sometime of folding the flag and presenting it to a family member. And when I do that, I fold it, I give it to the person, and I say, on behalf of the President of the United States and a grateful nation, I present you this flag. It's the flag of our country, and under which your family member so honorably and faithfully served. Salute the flag and it's gone. The veterans want their families to know how much it means and they want that flag folded. Are you gonna be part of that grateful nation I mentioned? Support veterans, be patriotic? But the other question is, and I hope you never have to answer this. If you were asked, and you were asked to serve and defend the United States of America and serve under that flag, would you do it? Thank you. Let's give another round of applause to Mr. Seeker. Mr. Seeker, thank you for being here today, and thank you so much for your service. Brenham High School's JROTC helps to prepare our students for leadership roles and prepares them to meet the challenges they will face after graduation. Please welcome the Brenham High School JROTC Armed Exhibition Drill Squad.
Please welcome our VHS choir back to the stage as they perform in honor of our veterans.
Thank you, BHS Choir. As our time together comes to an end, we would like to close our program with a poem written by Susan R. Smith. To all of our veterans, far and near, we thank you for your service for all those years. You sacrificed your time and gave your life. You preserved your freedom by willingly paying the price. Many of you were sent overseas. You were wounded in battle with scars and disease. But courageous and brave, you weathered the storm. You faced every battle with faith and beyond. We honor you with joy for all that you've done. You stood strong for our country, for our daughters and sons. So no one stands alone. Together we walk hand in hand. Remember we are with you. Together we shall stand. We salute you today. Hear what we say. Let our words speak eloquently in this special way. On this day, let us express our love and thanks for the sacrifice you paid. You served in honor for many years and days, and we will never forget how you were strong and brave. Veterans, we thank you for your service. Please join us in rooms 111 and 113 at the conclusion of the program. Students, please return to third period to retrieve your belongings. <laughs>